Amen, amen. God is good and all the time. We're glad to have you with us this morning. Welcome to Hunt Gujian Church. We believe that God, like our sisters shared and said, that God is still in the business of healing. God is still in the business of delivering. God's still in the business of setting people free, blessing people, and giving a way out where there is no way. Do you believe it, church? If you believe it, put your hands for mighty God in this place. We believe that God has called us us as a church and us as individuals to reach out to the world and we believe that the vision that God has given us to the church thousands locally and millions globally that we will see people being saved by dozens running to the altar call every single service people being saved in home groups people being saved through a power of, an, of, an, uh, of evangelism as we go out on the streets and minister and show love to people and we're gonna we believe that God's gonna do a great and mighty thing and we're gonna change our city for Christ amen and you and I will be a partaker of it, whether doing home, uh, home groups, whether doing home, uh, host groups, whether going out uh, with a group of uh, to do in the power of, of evangelism. We're going to make a difference in our city in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, church. As well as uh, thousands, uh, uh, thousands locally and millions globally through our social media, we see a great impact. Uh, people just uh, receiving uh, blessing through the messages, through the worship, through many different uh, testimonies that are being posted. People are commenting back, sending prayer requests, sending their testimonies, sharing that when they watch the live stream, they, they, they believe together, they pray together through the screen and they received healing and touch from God. God is doing something great church. God is on the move in this place and we are a part of it. We are a part of this vision. We are a part of what God is doing through us in Jesus mighty name. Amen church. But for this vision to go forward, in order for us to fuel this vision, we got to be a church that prays. Amen. That's why every single morning, the door is open at 5 a.m. Every single morning, I mean from Monday through Friday. On Saturday and Sunday, we give God a break. But on Monday through Friday at 5 a.m., the door is open for prayer. We have a lot of people that come before they go to work. They stop by here and they, and they pray for an hour, for half an hour, whatever the time is, allows them. 8 o'clock, interns come and from 8 to 9, 9.30, we have a group of interns of 35, 40 people coming and praying here. So whatever your times uh, allow, you can come here, pray. If you're not able to come here and pray throughout the week, pray at home. But we have to, Bible says that we, the, the church will be called the house of prayer. And if we're going to see this move of God, if we're going to see miracles like these and more of them, we got to be a house of prayer. We got to pray because prayer opens heavens, because prayer, prayer gives license for God's angels, for His Spirit to move. Just like sin gives a right to Satan to access your life, to destroy, to kill, steal and destroy. So is prayer gives a visa to heavenly angels to come and intervene on earth. And that's why we believe strongly and we're going to pray and going to be praying even more. On Friday night, we have a Friday fright, uh, night vigil starting at 9 p.m. We pray, we intercede. Last Friday night, there was a lot of people. We, it was just fire. How many were here last Friday night? There was just a fire of God and we were, we were interceding, praying for a city, for the vision. As well as uh, Alex is leading an intercession group and it gets posted on Slack uh, when they meet. Uh, they meet a couple times a week here they come and pray we're just gonna be a prayerful church amen church a church a, a person that prays is a person that doesn't sin a person that sins is a person that won't pray so if you want to sin less pray more amen church amen 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 we have our a monthly prayer line today uh where people come from different places different parts people fly in to receive prayer and touch from God and today at the end of the service we're going to join them together church as we're going to pray for them and uh, we believe that m the distance is not a barrier we believe that God's anointing will not escape their case and each person that came here with a need they will receive God's touch in Jesus mighty name amen church right now I want you to open with me to first Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9 and uh today I titled my message faithful God and I'm just going to share a few thoughts from my personal meditation of the last couple of weeks and just um, the things that um, 
God put on my heart and so let's read 1st Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. God who has called you unto the fellowship with his son Jesus Christ our Lord is faithful. Say faithful. faithful. Say faithful. faithful. Our God is faithful. I believe that every Christian should have a revelation and should know about God who's faithful because if you don't believe if you don't if you don't understand the faithfulness of God it's going to be really hard for you to have a relationship with God because faithfulness makes trust possible and trust makes relation po uh, relationship possible without faithfulness you have no trust and without trust you can't have a relationship so if you want to have a relationship with Jesus if you want to have a relationship with God you have to know that he is faithful that he is not going to abandon you he won't leave you he won't forsake you he'll be there for you that he's watching over you that he is God who is faithful and that's why apostle Paul that he writes to Corinthians he ensures them he says he has called you into fellowship with the son Jesus Christ and he underlines that he is faithful see faithfulness nowadays is very rare commodity we look today in our society and we look today at what's going on in the world, what's going on in America, what's going on in relationships and we, we can see that faithfulness is something that's been lost throughout time. People are less faithful to each other, less faithful in marriage, in relationships, people are less faithful in friendships, people are less faithful to their country. We see that this liberalism uh, and uh, this, this um, uh, social kind of environment that we, be, we we're growing up and especially the younger generation the example of faithfulness has been lost and a lot of times when we when we go through experiences in our lives when we live and a father leaves the home we see no faithfulness there when we live and uh, in our lives and, and uh, friends backstab us friends leave us and we go through many experiences of unfaithfulness in our lives that begins to shape our mindset that begins to shape our worldview and many times we take that that mindset and that worldview and we bring it into our relationship with God and we struggle in our relationship with God we struggle to pray we struggle to find pleasure in prayer because prayer becomes a religious routine prayer becomes something the church says that we should do but it lacks meaning to us because we don't understand the faithfulness of God and many times because of especially if we haven't seen and or been demonstrated the faithfulness of, of, of parents or father and mother in our home a lot of times we take that mindset and we bring it into our relationship with God and we struggle to relate to God and have fellowship with him like Apostle Paul says see word faithfulness means steadfastness firmness fidelity an opposite of it to for us to better understand this word opposite is is ever-changing and wishy-washy and um, sometimes we pray to God and we uh, we stand on a promise and we pray and doesn't come to pass and and we think that God changed because something didn't happen in our life because we prayed for something which we we begin to doubt God's faithfulness and God's love towards us but regardless of how we think and how we view and what our experience with faithfulness God always remains faithful he always remains faithful sometimes we go through situations in our life even sometimes we pray for certain things whether they happen or don't happen or they happen differently only God knows the reason why and how it happened and we know that all things work together for good for those that love him and at the end when we go through things might not, not we might not understand when we're going through it but when we come out of it on the other side we see his faithfulness first thing I want you to write it down is that your faith your relationship with God is as good as your revelation of God's faithfulness like I already mentioned that faithfulness makes trust possible and when you have trust you can have a relationship no relationship is possible without trust there's no relationship possible between husband and wife without a trust 
No friend, uh, no, no relationship possible in friendship without trust. If you don't know whether the person is going to be there for you or not, you can't open up yourself to them. You're just going to stay on acquaintances level and you can't move forward unless you know the character of a person that they're trustworthy. So in order for us, in order for, in order for us to have a better relationship, greater relationship with God, we must understand that God is trustworthy. You know, in a Bible, God made covenant with men 277 times. And 277 times, He remained faithful to those covenants. Even when the other side was unfaithful or faithless. God promised to Israel the, the land that He's, that he's given to, uh, to Abraham. He made covenant with Abraham about the land of Israel. And even though the nation of Israel ceased existing and they scattered, for almost 2,000 years they were not existent. God still was faithful to, in 1948 to bring them together and establish a nation of Israel. You know that no other nation, no other culture, no other society survived being scattered and abroad for 2,000 years and come back together and retain the core and the nature of its, of, of its culture and society. That shows that even if decades go by, centuries go by, God says, I am still faithful. Even if my own people abandon me and leave me behind. If we look and study a relationship of David. You know, David from the Bible, he fascinates me. He's my favorite character. I love maybe because he was a musician, he was a worshiper. And that's something that I love to do. I don't know what it is about David, but... David is my my favorite character and when I read I'm reading through Psalms again and um, and when I read David and I when I read his Psalms when I read his life Psalms is practically like a diary of David he he kind of documents everything he's going through in his life and he puts it in a in a in a song type of a thing and so and when I read his Psalms and I get amazed amazed how much David speaks of his faithfulness you start off a psalm saying, you know, David goes on, you know, everybody is against me. God, oh, why you abandoned me? You know, this is against me and that person is against me. And these terrible things are happening. And then he goes like, flips a switch. Last two verses, he says, you have rescued me. You are my strong tower. You are my refuge. He's like, wait, hold on. So are you rescued or are you in trouble? Which one it is, David? Because you can't be at the same time. But David had this, such a deep trust in God. That he will never forsaken him. He will never leave him. He said, yes, I know I'm still in pain. Yes, I know I'm still suffering. Yes, I know I'm still being persecuted by, the, by my enemy. But I'm rescued. Why? Because I trust you. Because I know you're faithful. It's, good as it's, it's as good as it's done. It, your faithfulness is as good as it's done. That's why David was able to firmly confirm, uh, uh, confess in Psalm 23 he says though I walk through the valleys of shadow of death I know you are with me and then he says that I'm going through all these things that you put a table before my enemy he says that in front of my enemy I'm gonna sit I'm gonna relax I'm gonna feast I'm gonna just chill because I know you're gonna take care of me David had a great relationship with God. No wonder God called him a man after his own heart. No wonder God, despite of David's mistakes, you know, despite the fact that David killed somebody, an innocent person, despite that David had different kind of troubles in his life and messed up plenty of times, less than actually Saul did, but God still dared to call him. A man after his own heart and I truly believe it's because David had just unbelievable trust in God he just had unbelievable trust in God's character and his faithfulness and God never failed him not even once another person let's put our hands together for Jesus another person another person that comes to my mind immediately is Job you know Job Bible says God said about him about him that he was a righteous man and Job worshiped God every morning brought sacrifices he prayed 
Job was an honorable man in his society. He took care of uh, the people around him uh, and I, Job was an incredible man and this terrible thing happens to him. Here's Job. He trusted God with all of his life. He prayed for his children. He, he covered his children uh, in prayer every morning. He prayed and, and uh, asked God for any um, for forgiveness for anything that he's done. I mean he pleased God with everything that he did and all of a sudden it looks like in a moment of his life God fails him. It looks like in a moment of his life everything every prayer that he prayed everything that he was a uh, he, he feared uh, in his life that it would not come upon him everything that he asked God not to happen to him at one moment in his life it seems like the bottom fell off from underneath of him and everything came crashing down I mean this was the worst thing it could happen losing your family losing your beloved children I can't even imagine a pain the parent can go through losing all your children all at once no comfort his friends can't even comfort and his wife turns against him I mean at this moment you think you know when you read the story and if you just read it on the surface it seems like you know it's a story with a great ending but if you place yourself in, a, in the shoes of Job for a moment and you place yourself in his suffering you know sometimes when you have a pain and when you go through a dark season even though we it, it could be a day too it could be a week but it seems like months and years we read there's few chapters of his suffering but I can only imagine how long it felt and how difficult and the thoughts he had to wrestle with yet at the end of all of this he stands and he says and he declares that my redeemer lives my redeemer lives sometimes when you read it, it's just like yes he's our redeemer but what redeemer means that he's a, a, a restorer what he was saying is that I know even at this point God still can restore me restore me I know even at this point God can still restore my family he can still restore my business he can still restore my fields he can restore my flocks he can restore my marriage even at this point of death he is my redeemer that's what he declared and as as we read through the story of Job we see that God comes to his rescue eventually he reveals his purpose to him and God comes around and gives him double of everything that he had and blesses him until this day Job is still considered the richest man in the Middle East and there's some pretty wealthy people in the Middle East today and his legacy stands true as a man of faith. Today we refer to Job as a man that persevered through trouble and received his reward. But even in those moments of pain, even in those moments where his body was aching, in the moments when his family was shattered and destroyed, in the moments where people turned against him, where enemies took hold of every possession that he had, even in those moments, he still had trust in God's faithfulness and declared, my Redeemer lives. Let's put our hands together for such a man of faith. You know that God commanded many scriptures in the Bible, many places in the Bible, God commanded His people to set up memorials or to do things in remembrance. Why did God ask when children of Israel crossed the river of Jordan and God said, to Joshua make sure that you take 12 stones from the middle of the river you set up a memorial what did he say to do so that the next generations and that people that will come and ask is what is this monument what is this memorial for that you can tell them what I did for you in Egypt pretty much what he's saying is this so you can tell them of my faithfulness this memorial will signify this memorial will stand here to say that God was faithful when he spoke and said to our uh, father Abraham that he's gonna take us out of this uh, land of Egypt and he's gonna lead us through and he's gonna bring us to the uh, to the land of milk and honey the memorial signified God's faithfulness in a New Testament Jesus is about to go on the cross and he's with his disciples and he begins to wash his wash their feet and he and he does the communion with them and he says do this in remembrance of me he was saying is that do this in remembrance of my faithfulness 
to the human uh, to the humanity to the humankind I I told I said that I'm gonna bring a redemption the whole New Testament and the sacrifices the temple was signifying of the coming of Jesus Christ the Lamb of God that's gonna take and and wipe our sins forever he what he was saying is I do this in remembrance of me is that when you do this remember of my faithfulness to you remember of my that that I did and I, fulf I fulfilled and I finished what I said what I promised I was gonna do to you what I was gonna do for you in uh, John uh, first John chapter 1 9 it says we, if we confess our sin he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and purify us from unrighteousness when he said do this in remembrance of me what he was saying is that I am faithful to forgive every sin he was saying I'm faithful to take your sin I'm faithful to heal you because by his stripes I'm healed what he was saying is that do this in remembrance of me is I am faithful to break every chain and every yoke over your life when he was saying do this in remembrance of me he was saying that I became poor so that you can be enriched through my poverty I am faithful to you in Jesus name if we want to have a strong relationship with God we have to have a revelation of God's faithfulness towards us point number two I want you to write it down is don't focus on your faithfulness to God but rather fix your eyes on his faithfulness to you many people struggle in their relationship with God and I'll be honest with you and I struggled in my relationship with God from for many years because there's there there were things that I was struggling with there were sins that I was trying to overcome there's certain habits that I knew that God wasn't pleased with that he wasn't happy with and I was trying to wrestle with them and sometimes we all we all are prone to mistakes and sins in our life right and sometimes we, what we do is we take our eyes off of his faithfulness towards us and we begin to f focus on our faithfulness towards God we begin to focus on the things that we do for God we begin to focus on how good we are with God and our relationship begins to struggle we we begin to walk in condemnation and shame because we know we're not good enough we know we fail him daily and then sometimes we hear these things preachers say from the pulpit saying that if you sin every time you sin you crucify Jesus again and again and then we have this image especially if you watch the passion of the Christ these horrific images the things that you do every single time to Jesus that you sin you have no boldness to come to him you have no boldness to come to the cross you have no boldness to to have a fellowship with him because every time you focus on your faithfulness instead of faithfulness of God you will struggle in your relationship with God you will struggle to walk with God every time you focus on how much you prayed a whole lack of prayer how much you read how much you fasted or lack of it anytime you focus on on what you did for God how much you gave you will struggle in your relationship with God you have to fix your eyes on Jesus you have to fix your eyes on his faithfulness towards you you have to fix your eyes on what he's done on the cross for you and receive the grace of salvation and know that he's faithful to help you go through every challenge in life and help you to overcome every sin that that torments you in Jesus name amen church amen. see the problem with Old Testament is in the Old Testament God made a covenant with men in the Old Testament Old Testament is about God made a, making covenant with men the problem with that is the problem was never with God God always remained faithful at everything that he did the problem was with humanity we were faulty we were broken we were not faithful to God and we see throughout the story of uh, starting from the garden uh, from the garden and how Adam and Eve they were unfaithful to God continuing all throughout the story of Israel and we see how how Israel was just not faithful to God and that's the problem with an Old Testament is that God the, the problem with it is the human factor the problem is our faithfulness which is not good and we see that God he already knew that that's going to be the problem he came and he that's not the glory of God that's the plains people <clears throat> and so God the Father in all his wisdom he, he he devised this plan he sent Jesus Christ down on earth 
I want you to listen to this carefully because it's going to set some of you free to, from uh, walking under the guilt and condemnation. The difference between New Testament and Old Testament is that in the New Testament God sends his son down on this earth. So Jesus being fully God and being fully man comes on earth and he spills his blood which Bible says is a new covenant and now God is in covenant with God. God is in covenant with himself and God can never be unfaithful. God can never make a mistake. God can never lie. He's always faithful. So now we being as his creation, we being when we receive Jesus Christ, we are united with Christ and we are in that covenant and even though sometimes we fall short, we're unfaithful but because we're in Jesus, we're still in that covenant because Jesus remains always faithful. He covers our sin. He covers our mistakes. So I want you to let go of every guilt and every condemnation that you might be walking in and receive the grace that we have in Jesus. The perfection that we have in Jesus and enjoy like we read for 1st Corinthians. Enjoy the fellowship with God because He sees you as faithful. He sees you as perfect. He sees you covered in Jesus name. Amen church. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. We're under a new covenant under a better covenant and today we can come boldly before the throne of grace to retain mercy and, and grace in the time of need. Amen church. So don't walk under guilt and condemnation. Walk in boldness. Every time you come in prayer, if something is nudging, if there is a sin in your life, you ask God for forgiveness and quickly declare that I'm covered and I am in Jesus Christ and now I can ask boldly whatever I need. Amen church. And last thing that I want to encourage you with is learn God's faithfulness yes learn God's faithfulness the way the three things and I quickly just gonna go through it the three things we can uh, uh, in Isaiah 46 9 uh, it says this remember the former things of old for I am God and there is no other I am God and there is none like me did you do you know that just a quick thing do you know that only in Christianity God declares himself faithful. No other religion and no other God declares themselves faithful to the humankind. Unconditionally faithful. Only in Christianity God declares himself, says whatever you do I'm faithful. I'm consistent. You can trust me. I do not change. Three things that will help us to learn about God's faithfulness. Number one is his word. Study his faithfulness in his word. Study his faithfulness. Go through the, uh, read the Bible. That's why it's important to read the Bible. When you read the Bible, it's not just a history book. It's not just some deep theology. It's when you read the stories and you, hear, uh, you read the pages in the lives of people where they were facing trouble and God came through. When they were struggling and God came through. Where there was a problem and God showed himself faithful. You read through the Bible. You read through the stories. You don't just read it as a history. You learn God's faithfulness and you say if God did it for David, if God did it for Job, if God did it for Ruth, if God did it for this person and that person and the other, he can do it for me. You begin to study the word, you get into the word and you learn that God is faithful because if you if you don't have a revelation, if you don't know his faithfulness you won't be able to trust him. If you can't trust him how can you fellowship with him? How can you have a relationship with him? You have to get into God's Word. Say, get into God's Word. Come on, say to your neighbor, get in into God's Word. Number two, look at His faithfulness in other people's lives. This is the reason why we share testimonies. We take a significant time in our church to always share testimonies. To always set up monuments of God's faithfulness. To always share that God is faithful. Because if you will be convinced that God is faithful, you will have a faith to believe for your situation. If you will be convinced that God is faithful in your business, you will have faith to believe for God in your business. If you believe that God is faithful to heal you, you have faith to believe for healing. If you are convinced and you trust God that He is a deliverer, you have faith 
to believe for your freedom quick story from my personal life about four or five years ago I was going through this this personal struggle um, especially in, in in the area of uh, finances and I was uh, working with God through this issue and it was a, it was a quite a bit of a process and uh, I, the things that I was frustrated was is that every time I'll pray for something it would it wouldn't it wouldn't happen in, in the area of finances um, actually as a matter of fact I, pr I prayed very very little uh, especially when it comes to businesses I had multiple businesses I had um, uh, different things that were going on different projects I prayed very actually very little for for my financial life and I didn't and every time I prayed I kind of felt awkward I guess just like I, I didn't feel right about asking God about it or praying I don't know why what why was it and um, and I would, I would take scriptures and I would quote you know in prayer or just confession and it just wasn't sitting sitting right with me and and, and one time I was taught, I was praying and asking God I said God I I don't know maybe I don't know what's going on but I just in this area I'm struggling I'll be honest with I was just honest with God and so God began to deal with me in different issues and he's beginning to peel me like an onion layer by layer and then got me to the point where I had to look honest at myself in this area particular area of finances and I had to say to myself God already knew it God I don't trust you with this area that's why I work really really hard and I pray barely anything about it that's why um, I, I trust I trust in my strength and I remember many times even my my dad our pastor senior pastor would bring up different testimonies about these people's getting breakthrough and this and this and I only almost kind of look scornfully upon it I'm like yeah that's just for lazy people type of a thing because I didn't trust God would find it. I almost find it repelling watching testimonies of breakthrough and prosperity and and, and I said God but why and I begin to look back in my personal life and uh, we come from family of missionaries and we come from a family of missionaries and uh, when we were missionaries in Russia we lived a very poor life poor life and any money that we would get small amounts of money that would that we would get um, good portion of it would go to to do evangelistic events uh, to buy pamphlets to buy this for the church to buy this and and we lived a poor life and constantly I remember borrowing and 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 all this stuff and I, I hated borrowing so bad down to down to my guts I just I just I just hated that I hated that feeling I felt like I was inferior I felt like oh, I, I, I felt like a second-class citizen I could never have what other people have and it's all because we're doing God's work so as you see God and, 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 and prosperity kind of wasn't going together because of that for many years I kind of almost built a resentment and when people even talked about it I didn't know God knew it but it came to the place where I had to be brutally honest with myself and I said God I'm sorry but I just don't trust you with this area and I'll do it on my own but I want to trust you and these are the things that I'm telling you this is how I began to restore myself in, and restore God's faithfulness in this area of my life I begin to say God I I, I want to trust you but at this point I, ca I can't because of all these negative experiences because of all this unfaithfulness that I've seen in this area and I begin to study his word and I begin to read it like I was reading it for the first time and asking God I want to know that you're faithful in this area in the area of finance I would pick out specially stories from the Bible of financial breakthroughs of just miracles happening the the story of multiplication of bread and and and, and fish and and all these things out study I pick up the I picked up a book um, that talked about Jewish history and Jewish cultures and why they were so successful and why they were um they were just people that were blessed by God and begin to study how they view God how they how they saw God and I begin to renew my mind in this area that God is faithful and God slowly but surely begin to show the one thing after another in this area providing and, and showing and, and doing different miracles the second thing that I started doing is I start looking up testimonies the testimonies that that my dad was bugging me with you know I decided to start watching them I started looking at them where God was doing incredible t test things cancellation of that just spontaneous out of nowhere miracle money that things that appeared in the, in, in, the, in the money that appeared in the account people that just gave generous gifts and and things like that and I started building my faith I started building my faith I started listening to business uh, Christian business people that were sharing different ways how God came through how God gave them idea their business exploded I started listening to people that their careers took off because of 
because God touched it because God was involved in it and I began to build my life build 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 my build my archives of testimonies and I started trusting God in this area and from that moment I began to see how God began to work in my life in the area of finances then then fast forward a few years later God began to open doors that I didn't even think I could ever have in my life flying on private jets with people consulting and just having uh, having these doors that are open and I'm like my god sometimes I sit the other time uh, when I was we were uh, we were flying um, to Dubai and I'm sitting there with all these people I mean they're talking they're talking about a uh, hundred million dollars like it's a hundred dollars and I'm like sitting there and I'm thinking to myself my god what am I doing here what what is this madness what how do I even relate to such a people you know I just went shopping and it's four hundred thousand I'm like what that's a really nice house where I'll come from and so and so and and, and I'm thinking like God how, how did that how did that happen and I can't think I, I can't but to think about that moment God said let me prove you my faithfulness in this area and I thank God I thank God that God is faithful and I can surely tell you today stand before him and I can tell you that God is faithful in this area and the third point is meditate on his faithfulness in your life when God begins to give you small victories in certain areas and he shows you faithful grab onto it like the the the, the last the last breath of air grab onto it like it's your saving uh, life-saving jacket hold on to it because what you meditate on you're gonna multiply it's gonna multiply in your life you're gonna be building faith see every miracle that God gives is like an apple you eat the apple you enjoy the benefit of the miracle but there's seeds in there and those seeds are the for your for your faith building you take those seeds and you plant it so you can have another apple another miracle and then the mother of miracles in your future you continue to build that that trust and faithfulness in God meditate set up personal memorials whether it's in diary that you write I write every breakthrough that God gives me every blessing that God gives me I document it and I do it so that when I do hit low times in my life I have a safety net I can open it up and read it and say God was faithful here he was faithful here he was faithful here he brought me through here he silenced my enemy here I can trust him again I can trust him again so the next time you find yourself in trouble you say I can trust him again and he's gonna come through in Jesus name second Thessalonians 3 3 but the Lord is faithful he will establish you and guard you against the evil one he's faithful God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability first Corinthians 10 13 his mercies are new every morning and his faithful faithfulness lasts a lifetime Hebrews 10 23 let us behold fast fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come